maybe, maybe it's like in a, in a conversation, but when you're out in the hall talking about different types of trees and where you go get those trees, you know, it's all about priorities and all that stuff. And talking about the different types of maples, maple trees that are out there and which ones grow faster and which ones are not, all that stuff. There you go. Or maybe Miss Iden knew I worked at a um, at a landscape place as one of my jobs growing up. Who knows? But hey, it's good. I always like talking about trees. I like talking about plants, all that. So there we go. Hey, how was your long weekend? Was it good? All right. Get outside and enjoy it. Hope so. I don't see. I haven't seen too many like uh, sunburns out there so that's good i fully anticipate when my son gets back from from mexico he will be burned he will he does not he does not know how to put on sunscreen all that stuff so his spring break was a, was a little later than first so university of minnesota pushed it back a couple weeks so good, good that you had a nice weekend. So here we go, we're getting ready to dig in and focus on some hard topics. Um, counterculture, I have gone through and I've updated. So you wanna make sure that you look at your uh, grades and um, can always still turn it in if you have not. Uh, looking at the counterculture, a really good understanding of the counterculture and what went into it and and looking at uh, some of the various uh, elements of it. So good job there. All right. So today we are going to continue with looking at the, uh, the civil rights movement. And this time we're gonna look at uh, civil rights in regards to African-Americans, all right? So we're gonna be looking at more of like this big civil rights movement. I know in the beginning of this unit of study, we looked at some other groups as well, almost like little offshoots of the civil rights movement. So maybe as we are studying this, um, well, it'll be a little bit clearer in, in understanding as we go through it. But uh, for us, uh, we're going to be taking on this element of the civil rights movement, and it should take us all the way uh, through the end of this trimester. So we'll continue to focus on this. This week, it's all about more getting some his, what we'll call historical context, uh, some good background to uh, the really the, the, the kickstarting of the civil rights movement after uh, the Second World War. Okay. Uh, is there any questions before we start, before we dig in? Okay. Uh, so to start off, I have a video clip here, and it's by uh, Martin Luther King Jr. And uh, he's going to give this speech in 1967. Excellent year, 1967. Because I'm biased because I was born in 1967. But still, 1967. And one will look at it, it's 1967, so I'm going to give some historical context to it, in that uh, there has already been some what we'll call major landmark legislation that's already been passed in regards to civil rights. Voting Rights Act, uh, an amendment to get rid of the poll tax, um, some civil rights legislation uh, acts have been passed as well. But still, uh, there are some lingering issues in the United States, and especially in regards to civil rights. Things that would perhaps maybe make uh, civil rights uh, more far-reaching and have a greater change uh, to the scope of society. And he's going to address that in 1967. We're not going to listen to the whole speech because that would mean we'd sit here for a little over an hour to listen to his speech. But we'll listen to the beginning of because he's going to speak of uh, the other America. Uh, there was a book that came out uh, earlier in the decade of the 1960s that talked about in other America and that here the United States uh, we are a economic juggernaut in the 50s uh, and in the early 60s but it 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 hadn't reached everyone all right 
So that's all I'm going to say about uh, the context of that. So as we watch it, think about, you know, what he's getting at as he describes the two Americas and see, you know, if we have any reactions to it, and then we'll, we'll go from there. All right? Here we go. little video clip here. Together is added a great deal. Dean LaPierre, Mr. Bell, and members of the faculty and members of the student body of this great institution of learning, ladies and gentlemen. Now, there are several things that uh, one could talk about before such a large, uh, concerned, and enlightened audience. There are so many problems facing our nation and our world that one could just take off anywhere. But today I would like to talk mainly about the race problem since I'll have to rush right out and go to New York to talk about Vietnam tomorrow, and I've been talking about it a great deal uh, this week and weeks before that. But I'd like to use as a subject from which to speak uh, this afternoon the other America. And I use this subject because there are literally two Americas. One America is beautiful for situation. And in a sense, this America is overflowing with the milk of prosperity and the honey of opportunity. And this America is the habitat of millions of people who have food and material necessities for their bodies, and culture and education for their minds, freedom and human dignity for their spirits. In this America, millions of people experience every day the opportunity of having life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness in all of their dimensions. And in this America, millions of young people grow up in the sunlight of opportunity. But tragically and unfortunately, there is another America. And this other America has a daily ugliness about it that constantly transforms the buoyancy of hope into the fatigue of despair. In this America, millions of work-starved men walk the streets daily in search for jobs that do not exist. In this America, millions of people find themselves living in rat-infested, vermin-filled slums. In this America, people are poor by the millions. And they find themselves perishing on a lonely island of poverty in the midst of a vast ocean of material prosperity. In a sense, the greatest tragedy of this other America is what it does to little children. Little children in this other America are forced to grow up with clouds of inferiority forming every day in their little mental skies. And as we look at this other America, we see it as an arena of blasted hopes and shattered dreams. 
Many people of various backgrounds live in this other America. Uh, America. Some are Mexican Americans, some are Puerto Ricans, some are Indians, uh, some uh, happen to be from other groups. Millions of them are Appalachian white. Probably the largest group in this other America in proportion to its size in the population is the American Negro. The American Negro finds himself living in a triple ghetto, a ghetto of race, a ghetto of poverty, a ghetto is to deal with this problem, to deal with this problem of the two Americas. We are seeking to make America one nation, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. All right, um, just some uh, immediate thoughts of what, what is uh, Dr. King um, really getting at here or any reactions that you have about the message of Dr. King? Anyone have any thoughts? What do you got? He's more describing the fact of the opportunity of just how one side is getting, as he, as he plays in a top, prosperous, na beautiful nation, while the other side is stuck, is stuck in the ghetto. Okay. Just have the opportunity looking for jobs that aren't there. All right. So he's describing what he thinks are the two Americas. All right. Or, you know, what what is considered the two Americas. All right. Oh. Shouldn't say he thinks, but what two uh, what the two Americas look like? They are opposite. All right. What else? What about his tone when he's speaking? What, can we say anything about his tone? Now, this is a skill that we do in year two when we, when we look at um, origin, purpose, value, and limits and content. We tend to look at um, tone of words, tone of the text, tone of a speech. If we have a context of, of uh, Dr. King here, um, is this typically the tone of him. I mean, we need a little have more context of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Um, I would say he seems to be a little subdued in his tone. He's serious, but he subdued energy. It's 1967. Um, there's been a lot uh, that has been thrown at Dr. King here, um, about his character, but also how 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 can he carry on uh, the the civil rights movement because it is splintering into different factions at this point. Um, he talked about an important. He mentioned an important event that was happening that he's going to have to speak about. And it was about the Vietnam War. That is going to be big here as well. This speech here, the other America, kind of is considered one of his top five speeches that he will he will give. Now, um, about a year later, he be assassinated, so he's not going to be around much much longer here. The other America, who does it include? Who does he mention is that makes up the other America? What's that? Native Americans are in there. Who else? Mexican Americans. All right. Ooh. You know, we covered a couple of these groups already. Puerto Ricans in there, so that's the Latinx. What's that? No, I don't. 
I, he, he talked about Indians. I, I think he was referring to the Native Americans. Yep. Um, I, if I look at immigration trends at this time, uh, not many were, I mean, they were starting to come from South Asia where India is, but not in, not in the numbers that we'll see in the 90s and the early 2000s. Uh, but he also brought up white America too, and he spoke about Appalachia. All right, does anyone know where, here we go, human geography, Appalachia. Like the mountains, all right? So he's speaking to, um, you know, like West Virginia, uh, uh, parts of Pennsylvania, parts of uh, North Carolina, that area that historically is poor. And uh, how this other, he, so he is painting the picture of other America. It's more, African-Americans make up a big chunk of it, as he mentions, but this is also going to impact others. All right. So that, that, that's a little bit more um, depth there. But um, this is other America. It's there. It's real. What he is trying to do here also after 1965 is find a way to have this civil rights movement become bigger. Because realistically, the civil rights movement, uh, many of the issues of the early civil rights movement speaks to the American South. Now, uh, and, and when I say that, American South, it looks on some of those Jim Crow laws. We can find them in other places too. There's de facto and de jure um, segregation. De jure segregation is by law. All right, so that would be like going to a movie theater or sitting on a bus. But then you have the facto by custom tradition where, um, no, you don't, this is not your neighborhood. That's like de facto. Some of those, those custom pieces there as well. So he is trying to make this much bigger. And he's having some success. And he's going to be working on planning a poor people's march that was going to take place in 1968. But his assassination kind of um, slows that piece down. There will be a poor people's march eventually. Okay. But if we want to look at the civil rights movement, what is it getting at? He is hitting some of those just with that particular speech that still is there. Now, when you came in, I did have a see here. Mm -hmm. There we go. Uh, there was a, a, a civil rights commission that was uh, put together after the Second World War, and it came up with something known as to secure these rights. And this was 1947, 20 years earlier. And to secure uh, these rights, uh, this commission came up with four main, uh, what they consider four essential rights for all Americans. The right to safety and security of the person, the right to citizenship and its privileges, the right to freedom of commerce and expression, and the right to equality for all opportunities. Right. So these are things that he still is that he, uh, he addresses in that other America speech that still is rather unfulfilled. And we can, we can theorize and we can, we can talk about that element today. So for Dr. King, the civil rights movement, a good chunk is about uh, how it affects African-Americans, but then he also talks about uh, for it to affect every American, if we really are going to live up to this experience or this experiment that we, that we have had going since the beginning of our nation. So we'll go all the way back to 1776. All right. Now, um, where we would learn about the other America, so try to stay with me, those who 
are, are, are going off in different places right now. Try to stay with me. We have to look at the media and how we could get our information. So in the 20th century, all right, let's talk about the 20th century, early to mid 20th century, what were some ways in which we could get information, learn about an event? What would be some, let's just brainstorm. What would be some ways in which we can learn about events through the media? What type? Radio? Newspaper? Down to down from person to person. What's that? Down to down from person to person. Person to person. Okay. We had good old fashioned magazines back then as well. All that. Didn't have the internet, didn't have social media like we have, all right? So if we talk about early 20th century, late 19th century, early 20th century, those mediums to talk about word of mouth, all right? If we were to get information word of mouth, what would be some types of places that we could get that word of mouth? What's that? From Well, from TV, but if, if we were going to meet – in person, where what could be some places? Dinner table. Oh, dinner table, yeah. Where else? Restaurants. Work. I would say probably every four or five weeks. Um, this is how one way in which I I can share some information and and and, and interact with individuals when I get my hair cut. Well, we talk about everything. We talk about everything. But haircut. Uh, so gatherings, it could be at the house, but it could also be um, at a club or at a church. So word of mouth, those types of things. Newspapers are very important. Other America, if we picked up a newspaper like this uh, Pioneer Press, well, it would be like the St. Paul Pioneer and the St. Paul Press before they became that. Minneapolis Star, Minneapolis Tribune before they merged. Um, that's mainstream media. But we really probably want to found out a lot about the other America. So that's where the power of black press, black newspapers come in. And they're in, and it's, I'm focusing on them today and probably a little bit tomorrow on them as well. So here, let's share this. In Minnesota, we have a magazine, we have a newspaper, and here's an online version of it. <clears throat> the Minnesota Spokesman uh, Recorder. Has anyone heard of that before? Now, I do have a link to this uh, on the Schoology page, just in case you want to look at it as well. But this newspaper has been around for a little while. It's been around for 86 years. 86 years. And it was started in 1934 by a civil rights activist and a businessman. As two separate newspapers, but then they merged. All right. And so it's still within, within the family. And it's a champion, it's established as a trusted voice for the diverse black community of Minnesota, extreme voices and stories that might otherwise go unheard. So you, you, you see that, is, is it important then as well as today to have newspapers that speak to a certain voice? Okay, I see some heads going up this way. Why? Why is it important? Why would it be important? Oh, yeah. Certain groups need certain information. Not every group, not every group that, well, not every group has the same important information. Like one thing that could be important for this group can't, is, is less so than to another. Okay. Could speak uh, to the importance of a group. All right. 
Okay. What else? Go ahead. Okay, different perspective. I mean, realistically, what do newspapers do, or magazines do, or television do? What are they doing? What's their point? Broadcast to someone's point of view. Okay. How, how would other groups know about their accomplishments if, if we, you kind of get where I'm getting at? It's like, if, if I pick up the Star Tribune, or if I pick up the, the uh, Pioneer Press, or if I pick up the New York Times, or pick up the Los Angeles Times, um, is, is, that, is that newspaper going to be encompassing of all? Probably not. So I may not necessarily know. Um, so someone, in some ways, needs to be the voice. And so when we look at that other America that Dr. King is talking about, how are we going to learn about that other America is going to probably be through magazines, newspapers, all this. Mainstream America may not know about the other America and the problems that exist, right? But now how to bring it together is, 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 is key here, all right? Um, their intention may not necessarily to be balanced and fair. The intention is just to showcase perhaps a perspective, a certain perspective, and get that known, all right? So that becomes the vehicle and the means that we're going to look at. Black newspapers are going to be very important here. Um, have you ever seen the movie 42 about Jackie Robinson? Yes. All right. Um, as Jackie Robinson is going from uh, the, the Negro League to professional baseball, who is documenting his story? Do you remember? I got to pay attention to the details. Well, this is a conversation I had with uh, Mrs. New a couple days ago as well. Um, a, a black reporter for a newspaper out of, I want to say, Pittsburgh. And it was a very influential black newspaper. And his goal was he's going to document everything that Jackie Robinson is going through, the positive and the negative. In the mainstream press, hadn't been a lot of positives about Jackie Robinson. We focused a lot on breaking the barrier and uh, the racial issues that is being caused here. But the journalist, the other journalist is focusing on that, but also the success that Robinson is having at the plate, but then also off the field too, in terms of what he means to uh, the greater community. Big stuff, big stuff there. All right, so the piece of paper that you have in front of you and those at home, you're gonna be, you're gonna be doing this on paper as well, is this activity that we're gonna focus on. So let's go to it in Schoology. It's called the OTO. Origins, tactics, and organizations here. All right. And if you open it up, it's going to look something like this. And we're going to use um, it. Uh, the, the newspaper is going to be our platform to get our historical context here. And uh, we do need to gain that historical background in order to truly understand the civil rights movement. And um, we've already touched on some of this in the study. We looked at the Civil War and, and Reconstruction. 
especially during the reconstruction year, we touched on some of the, we touched on some of this in the, in, in the Great Depression as well as with the Second World War. All right. And so, uh, so some is going to be uh, a review and we'll have some new areas of concern here. All right. So we're going to do this solo. And what we're going to do is after our, what our goal here is to again look at the origins of the civil rights movement. So what are the issues? We want to look at tactics. All right. We already know about a little bit of Martin Luther King Jr. All right, Martin Luther King Jr., his tactics are what? Peaceful, nonviolent, civil disobedience, peaceful, follows the philosophies of uh, the Mahatmas Gandhi. All right, but then you have others of his contemporary time that become a little bit more militant. You hit me, I hit you back. Kind of mentality. But some of the tactics are already be used by different groups. And some I use other means and then organizations. All right. Sometimes we focus on the, the NAACP uh, or uh, Martin Luther King Jr.'s uh, organization, the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. But there are other groups out there that um, exist that have similar goals and also maybe competing goals. And we need to understand those as well. All right. So this is going to be a, a buckle up historical journey as we go on here. All right. So this is going to be solo. Um, again, we got to deal with some social protocol and all that stuff. You can create a newspaper, and that's where we, we're going to do it old school. We're going to do it on paper. All right. We're going old school here. So, um, but it can also be done, uh, especially those at home, it can be done on your notebook or on print paper. That. Um, and, uh, at home, you just take some pictures of the pages and, and submit them as well for those here. Um, we'll just turn that finished product in, in class. So your job is to work through the topics listed, creating a newspaper, and it should look like a newspaper format, not just a list of notes. We know that in newspapers, I should almost say, when's the last time someone actually read a newspaper? Held one in your hands. Okay, maybe that's just old school. Yesterday for me. And then uh, yesterday it was, it was uh, a struggle to try to show my mother-in-law. Oh, yeah, it's right here, right here, right here. on. The, and then, of course, you know, she's an old English teacher, and she has to critique the quality of the organization, the quality of the newspaper articles, all that stuff. And I'm like, the box score is right there. That's all you need to do. Look at the box score. All right. Newspapers, but my point is there are so many different types of news stories. Okay? And so some of it can be hard news. Some can be uh, focusing on an uh, individual. It can be a Q&A. So there's a lot of different formats, right? So you need to choose three topics from each category so three from each category we got three categories here the origins spring us all the way uh and these are some of the topics in it. you got to pick three of them tactics here we go you pick three of them all right uh the niagara movement is going to help initiate the the naacp talent intent referring to those uh african americans that have succeeded like William Du Bois, now their job is to go back and try to bring more along uh, along the way. Uh, HBCUs, HBCUs, what's that stand for? Historically, historically black colleges uh, and universities, and they have received uh, some new interests these past several years for many way uh, for many reasons, um, and perhaps maybe the fact that uh, our current vice president is a product of HBCUs, right? We have read the uh, World's Fair speech. Okay, getting a little too much here. Organization, so here we got some organization and uh, leaders, all right? We, we probably know a little bit about Garvey, Du Bois, and Washington, but not so much about Charles Houston and A. Philip Randolph. A. Philip Randolph is a labor leader. 
And Charles H. Houston, he is a legal scholar. All right, so we've got some uh, other people here. So if that of interest. For each topic, uh, please make sure you include the following. And so visuals, visuals here can be either hand-drawn or maybe you can print some out and then just tape them down. So I'll give you that. But again, be very careful with uh, imagery as well, because some of these, well, when we deal with in category A, we want to be a little bit more sensitive on the, the visuals we use. All right. So here is kind of the things that you need to think about for each of your topics. And again, like I had said, um, there are different types of articles that are out there as well. You know editorial, hard news type, just pure facts, or special interests type things, okay? And of course, we got the BHQ there. As always, we're looking for the big historical question. How did people and events you research make a difference in the civil rights movement for African Americans up through uh, 1945, okay? And you examples in response. So we wanna look at so um, again, some of these may not be so well known, and so how does it influence? All right, this will be due Thursday, Thursday, which I believe is April eighth. Okay, any questions on 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 how we do this? Anything that needs to get clarified, either here or at home. Okay, you're probably just shocking all right now. So come on, Mr. New Community, can you just be straight up? That type. All right. Um, before I cut you loose to work on this, um, next week, next week you have ACT test for juniors. All right, and so, uh, you can perhaps help the process by, you know, uh, if you have it, if you do not have an ACT account, or if you do have an ACT account, to ensure that it is updated with your current credentials and all that stuff. So um, you can view your score and all that stuff because this test next week is for real. All right, it's the real deal. But, um, what, well, it had been a trend. Uh, some colleges are moving away from some of these standardized tests. Some are moving away and others are continuing to hold, hold steady with it. So with the ACT test, just make sure that, you know, if there's a college out there of your interests, that you find out what you're looking for. It's not all of them are the same. All right, so with that, I will cut you loose. You can work on it, those at home. If you don't have any questions, you can exit. But if you have questions, stay on, ask me. Those here, let's dig in. And if questions come up, ask. All right.